Welcome back, everybody, to the Miami Dolphins franchise, and we are going about to get into the offseason here. After finishing off season number five in the best way you possibly can, by defeating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Super Bowl to take home another Lombardi Trophy, back-to-back -back champs here in season four and season five, and who knows, maybe next year we'll look for three-time champs. Uh, that's never been done in the NFL, so something we can look forward to as we head into this offseason to try to continue to build this team and try to keep it around. This is a big offseason. This is huge, and we'll get to the reason why it is a big offseason. Uh, even though there might not be a lot of moves made, this is a big one, but this is the new season recap. I like this screen. I think it's pretty cool. I think this is fantastic when you, you know, you're five, six, seven years deep to a franchise. You want to see and remember what happened, who was the MVP, Rookies of the Year. This is a great thing. I, I really enjoy it. So, one change to this franchise we're going to do, I dropped the X Factor down to 25. I know I had it a lot higher than that. And the reasoning is, I just think that you just, if you're an X Factor, you're one of those top players in the league. And in my opinion, there shouldn't be 50 of them. There should be a limited amount. 25 is even maybe a little too high, but uh, I just kept it at 25. Dropped down Superstar as well and just maxed out the star development. I think that'll work out. I think that works out. It makes more, a lot more sense. You still have those elite players, so that's why you'll see some guys' development change. But let's get into the reason why this offseason is very important. You can see the guys we have to re-sign here in a few minutes, but... Next year, take a look. I mean, you got Lions, Gibbs, Vince Haynes, Randall Morgan, Jazeer Becton, Elkin Jenkins, Galvin, Gesicki, Austin Cloud, and then you even got Marcus Williams, Jerome Baker. That is your free agent list for next year. So, with this re signing of Dalton Steele, with the re signing of Tua, there is so much cap space you're going to have, and those guys. We want to bring back, you know, you would love to bring back all of them, but it's just not the possibility. That is why this offseason, we, we really have to be conservative and don't really go anything crazy because we need cap for those guys next year. So we just spend everything this year and we re-sign guys here, you know, to bigger contracts right now. Next year, it's going to be an absolute mess. So that's how we're coming into this offseason as we take a look at the retirement list. We're just going to have to be very, I would say, just selective in free agency. I'm not I'm not willing to give out big contracts this free agency at all, even if there's big-time players. I think right now uh, we have guys at every position that I, I trust in. Obviously, we won two straight Super Bowls. So I'm fine with just bringing those guys, having those guys be back that are still under contract. And there might be a few guys we lose, but we just have to fill in either through the draft. And right now, I think even the backups were good to go. As you see, Mike McCarthy, Gruden have retired. And because you can see also here is the regression. It's not too bad. So guys that still have a year or two under their under contract, they're, you know, they're not going to go anywhere this year. You know, we're fine with that. And some of these guys like Gronk and probably um, Gus Edwards, we're probably going to let them go. But we have to see what their contract demands in, and I think that's where we're going to head to next. We'll head into the first part here of re-signing players to negotiate and try to bring back this team. I don't think it's going to be a whole lot. So Joe Waddle, we ended up signing him. He was a undrafted free agent, and I know he's a star development, 74 overall, but I just don't. I'm not willing to give you that type of contract. Tavares Tate, uh, with that, you know, not too bad as a backup. He filled in into the playoffs. Uh, he didn't do half bad, so I'm fine with that deal. He likes it. He is brought back. He'll be a backup position. Ben Bredersen, I'm not sure. I mean, it's not that bad of a deal. Uh, not, you know, I don't know. Maybe we can find somebody to let him go to free agents. Melvin Gordon, free agent. Josh Jones, we're going to let him walk as well. Same with Ake Akeem Butler, Ted Bloom. Deron Payne's the big one. He wants about a $24.3 million deal over two years, so obviously like around $12 million a, a year with the signing bonus. I'm willing to let him walk. I know that sounds maybe a little crazy. I'm willing to let him walk. I think we move in Randall Morgan. We got Juan Blackburn in there as well, so I, I think we let him walk. Same with Rod Street. Three years, $35 million. I mean, he doesn't make enough of an impact to where I'm going to justify that money. And that's what I mean. I'm looking into next year as well. I just don't see it. So I think we're going to let him walk as well. And 
You know, we have guys that could fill in. Jake Matthews, this is a big one because I'm, if I remember correctly, looking at the draft class, this class is awful. It is not good. So we might let Matthews walk, see who's around at right tackle, and then if it's him that's really number one there, we'll just try to go back to him. Uh, Robert Gronkowski, Edwards, we'll let them walk. I'm surprised Gronkowski did not retire, even if we got this little uh, scenario things that, you know, Gronk might retire, and he didn't. So he, he continues on. Nasser Adderley, we're going to bring him back. Fine, I'm fine with him being a backup. Nathan Martin, this is a big one. Obviously, last year, led our team some sacks uh, with 10. I think he had like around 8 or 9 this year. He is absolutely a great pass rush specialist. There's no doubt about that. But um, the money, I know it says 28.4. I'm trying to play this more, uh, you know, more of a realistic notions. There's no way he would take that money. As a sack specialist, he would want way more money than that. So for me, realistically, we're not going to bring him back. It's just he would just demand way more money. Whereas Frank Canty, who was kind of, you know, a backup role, occasionally gets in there, makes some plays, not really anything crazy. He is right there on that cusp, and I think we can bring him back and for a cheaper offer. I think we can just give him the one-year deal, you know, up to $2.5 million. Now, he probably won more than that, but... He's more of a backup. He doesn't get that much playing time, so I think we do that deal for Frank Canty. Matt Hawk, we'll just bring him back on a one-year deal. Um, yeah, one-year deal. Hopefully, he can re resigns this, and he does resigns there. Morgan Moses and Deshaun Patrick. I think we both let them walk, and then we'll look more at the position. Deshaun Patrick maybe think about bringing back. Um, but fullback, once again, is a position that not always used. You know, more single back pistol, running out of the shotgun. Don't always need that fullback. It's obviously not a position of real need. You can bring in somebody else. As we go into now free agency, yeah, we need a right tackle. I think the rest of the offensive line is fine. We don't need anything there. We probably could look at tight end, but could look at that in the draft. Receiver, we're good there. Don't need anything at all. Defensively. So what I think we're going to do is I think we're going to move Frank Canty to end. I think that would move out perfectly. And then Randall Morgan, Juan Blackburn, Ray Bryant, we can rotate them all in defensive tackle. Vince Haynes, we're fine at safety. We're fine at corner. This is what I mean. Even if I came in with a lot of money, there's no real positions that really are needed this past offseason. We're almost going to go probably into the season with kind of the same team. Not going to really make any trades right now. The only guy I've thought about trading is... I'm going to say it's going to be um, Mike Kosicki. He's like the only one right now, or Marcus Williams. But Marcus Williams, even though he doesn't make a ton of plays, just having him back there I think is what, you know, if you have a guy back there that's a little bit more on experience, maybe a lot of plays happen that don't happen because he's back there. But he might be, we'll see. I mean, this is, this is uh, that, that's going to be a next year problem. As we head into free agency, you can see big time guys, DeAndre Hopkins, Fletcher Cox, Stephon Gilmore, Keenan Allen, Calvin McLean. So the Saints, wow, the Saints let him go. That is a big one. Khalil Mack, Von Miller. So you got some veteran pass rushers. Jared Sharpton leaves Tennessee. Jadavion Clowney is gone as well. So this is a Marcus Valentine back up to uh, Nick Chubby is gone. There's Nathan Martin and Rod Street. This is a very, very good free agent. And you can see, I think, a lot of teams, as you can see, a lot of teams, I think, have some cap issues. Because you have so many guys, as you can see, don't even have bids on them. And maybe they're waiting to the second week, see how it plays out. Michael Pittman Jr., very good receiver. Sean, I mean, if you need a running back, this free agent, with his equal favors, I mean, they, they're there. I, I think... If I was a team looking at this draft class too, I would think about signing a couple guys here because this draft class is not too good. So the first person we're going to look at is Tyus Bowser. He is now 30 years old, but he is a very good coverage linebacker. And it's tough to find those. That is one deficiency we've had. You know, injury at linebacker, bringing in guys that can't cover. So I think we try to bring in Tyus Bowser. Looking at the offensive line marker, Market, there's not much more better than Jake Matthews. I think we just try to bring him back once again uh, on a one-year deal. So we'll offer Jake Matthews a deal. 
As for fullback, we'll go Jacob Johnson. Just bring him in in a cheaper deal. Try to sign him there. Uh, it's not going to be too much. Just about one point yet. One point three six million. Try to sign him, veteran fullback, and I think that is going to be where we're going to go to week number two. And you can see Johnson and Jake Matthews so far have accepted. So, like I said, free agency is going to be slow. And taking a look at this draft. So, we have all the draft picks we need, but what do we need? That's the real question. And going down the list, taking a look, going maybe where we're around. So, we have a you know free safety corner, Eli uh, Duhon. This is a guy maybe we could think about. You know, adding another pass rusher with Nathan Martin and Rod Streak gone. Uh, maybe we bring him on. He looks like an absolute beast. So that could be near the end of the first round. Tariq Barclay, another guy. This guy's more of, you know, I think a coverage linebacker. So that could be really something that could help out as well. Because who knows? I mean, Jerome Baker could be gone next year. I know we got Cordy Hayward, but you got to fit, you know, fill in guys. Could be Becton, could be gone. Or do we go Jamie Lynch because offensive line, who knows what happens there? Does Gibbs resign? So I'm not sure, and it's never that bad to have you know really good offensive line depth because we've seen injuries in the past that really hurt us. Um, but you can see, I mean, it's kind of slim pickings right now in this draft. As you can see, in the, even in the top 64 players, there's not really a whole lot, and really it's, you know, it's not really a whole lot that we need. As Bowser accepts... So the three guys we target in the free agency, not the greatest, not the craziest free agency, but we get them all. So now we get fifth year's options. So Jazir Becton, fifth year, this is going to help out a lot. This will obviously up the cap, but we won't have to, you know, that list dims down at least at just a little bit of guys we have to think about re-signing next season. So Becton will accept the fifth year option, and same with Austin Cloud, no doubt about it. This, this is one of those guys that I have no questions about. I think him... Right now, out of all those guys on that list, there's three guys that I'm going to do everything I can to bring them back. And one of them is Austin Cloud. So you can see his salary will raise up to around $9.53 million, where Jersey or Becton gives him a 13.2. The other is Vince Haynes. He made such an impact in the run game, and his pass rushing ability is still there. And the other really, even though he might be up there in age, is Jerome Baker. He just makes so many plays, so... We'll see how this season going. As free agent ends, Fletcher Cox is going to go to New England, so we're going to see him twice a year. Stephon Gilmore heads over to Philadelphia. Keenan Allen goes to New Orleans. And Calvin McLean, he signs with the Titans. So obviously no more Ryan Tannehill there. Khalil Mack to Washington. The Lions cleaning up with Sharpton Von Miller. Clowney is going to go to Denver. Sims to the Giants. Rod Street ends up going to Tampa Bay. Nathan Martin is going to go over to the L.A. Chargers. So we might, well, depending on the schedule, we'll see if we see those guys uh, this coming year. Daniel Carter back to the Bengals. Any other big-time signings within our division? Taking a look. Jeff Locke is going to go to the Panthers. Kirion Johnson to the Cardinals. Will Lutz. So it looks like Tennessee's making some deals. Will Fuller to the Raiders. So there's Michael Pippen Jr. That's a big signing for the Jets. I'm really interested to see. I think... Um, I think Darnold had one more year left on his deal, so we'll have to see if they need to make a, a new change at quarterback as Justice Beckham, Beckham. He's headed over to the Jets, so they're getting some young receivers. Sean Wilcox running back, so the Jets look like they had a very good free agency period um, as they're trying to keep up in this division. It is tough. The Patriots are good. We're the two-time champs. The Bills aren't going away anytime soon. So you're going to have to make some moves and make some splashes to try to get back into this division. But yeah, I'm really interested to see what the Jets do. I think they have the number two overall pick. So when we get into the draft here in a second, do they go quarterback? Is the new quarterback going to be New York? Or do they stick with Sam Darnold with one year left in his deal? Texans on the clock first. They had the number one pick last year. They took the quarterback and he has been outstanding. And now they still have the number one pick because obviously they had a rough year. So where do they go? Obviously not going to be quarterback. The first overall pick is going to be a corner. Doug Honeycutt, 78 overall out of Michigan. So the Texans, like we got the offense. Now they're going to defense the side of the ball. But here come the Jets. Number two overall pick. Where do they go? And they go George Carnegie. Right tackle out of Oklahoma State. So they don't go with the quarterback route. And looks like Darnold 
is here to stay. Warren Pickens, defensive tackle, number three over pick to Denver. As the Raiders on the clock, they take Grant Campbell, tackle out of Oregon State. Austin Duran, oh man, 69 overall. This is what I'm saying. The, the, this draft class, not good at all. Tarpley, defensive tackle of Florida, goes to Arizona. Uh, Jeremiah Morgan, left guard out of Michigan State, goes to Philadelphia. 73 overall, Ronnie Lynch, wide receiver, will go to the Giants out of Virginia Tech. As the Chargers take Marvin Colbert, left end out of Penn State. Alfonso Posey out of UFC is going to go to Minnesota. Ben Carson, Linebacker out of USC goes to Chicago, as obviously they lost Khalil Mack, so trying to, you know, back that up some, somehow. Connor Foster, guard, goes to San Francisco, as James Bradford, wide receiver, goes to the Bills, so trying to up their receiving game. Obviously, last year losing Stephon Diggs to free agency. As Ahmad Ross, that looks like one of the best picks to Dallas. Cornerback as Indy is on the clock. And they take Brandon Royster end out of Oklahoma. As oh, there's Marco McKay, quarterback goes to Tennessee. You just signed Calvin McLean to like a massive two hundred million dollar deal. Why in the world would you draft a quarterback with your first round pick? Absolutely makes no sense. This quarterback pick makes sense. Bobby Stevenson going to the Rams. Uh, Stafford obviously now gone. They don't have golf anymore. So they need a quarterback. That makes perfect sense. But what in the world were the Titans doing? <laughs> Unbelievable. You would think that is just the, the logic of this game sometimes. Even though it is improved, you have you just signed a massive deal to a free agent. So that is something I might have to go in. We might have to kind of. Do a little behind the scenes there because that's ridiculous. He's just going to sit behind him until his contract's up. So I, I just don't think that would be happening at all. So we'll have to think about that. Jonathan Chapman, as we get on here, he goes to Carolina as the Browns are on the clock. And they take Eli Duhon. Oh, man, that is the guy that we looked at. He is a 7-8 overall. He looks like he's an absolute beast. As the Browns just add another guy to go with Miles Garrett. That's fantastic. As Tyreek Barclay goes to Tampa Bay. And we are on the clock here with our first pick. Last pick of the first round. And you can see that is the guy we wanted. There's not a whole lot here. Mm. Do we take Jamie Lidge? That, that might be the pick. But I don't know if I want to pick him here. Maybe we can trade back and just acquire some more picks. Maybe not for this draft. Maybe for future drafts um uh, yeah i mean andrew bishop maybe but i don't think i want to take him at this spot yeah i'm not really seeing anything here maybe we maybe it's we're gonna have to trade out of this pick because these guys are obviously third round grades the guys you know i they're just i'm not going to pick that at all 100 percent. so i think we're gonna trade this pick away um not the most exciting offseason going on so far. Don't no doubt about it. And I, I mean, you know, coming in, I knew this was going to happen. It's just this is not going to be exciting, but it's important in the sense that we have to remain. You know, we got to stay in our place because next year is absolute craziness. So we didn't trade out too much. We acquired a fourth and we dropped back what five or six spots. I just feel at some, you know, at this point, maybe now. Here in uh, pick number four of the second round, I am ter totally fine now going with possibly Jamie Lidge. I'm fine at the spot here. Offensive line is going is always a need. I'm fine with this pick, and I think this is what we do. He's a 73 overall, ranked 23rd in true talent. He's only a normal development, but 82 run block, 80 pass block, 88 strength. I'll take that. That is perfect. We can kind of move him around. Nothing wrong there. Solid pick in the second round. So we get to our second pick now in the second round. Pick number 32 on the clock. Let's see who is available here. So you have Andrew Bishop left in. Now maybe we think about adding a pass rusher to help out. Uh, B Finesse Boos, B Pursuit, not too bad. Kyle Culver, we don't need a halfback. Uh, Joe Barker, outside linebacker, eh. George Ross can do on the list. Here's Braxton Clay out of LSU, 464, best in bench press, has good agility, B plus blocking, B plus pursuit, B tackle, 61232. 
He is going to be, he can maybe get to the passer for sure. That's not that bad. Maybe this is where we go. Maybe we go with Braxton Clay out of LSU. I mean, his measurables seem fine. A little underweight at 232, but not too bad. He's a 75 overall hidden development. And that's exactly what we needed. We needed to bring in another pass rusher. 86 speed, 92 acceleration, 81 pursuit, 77 finesse moves, 81 block shed. And he's got also 72 zone coverage. So not only can he get to the pass, he can, he can pass rush very well. He can cover in space. So that looked like an excellent pick as we head into the third round. Last pick of the third. Looking around, we got Rashid Scott. 6'5", 251, runs a 457. Still 29 bench reps, A minus hit power, B plus tackle. Or we got Clay Turner looking at another possibly tight end. Obviously, you know, Gasicki could be gone. Uh, we still have Alex Keys there. So we may be looking at tight ends. Michael Simmons going down the list. You got Brad Beck, another LSU guy, 464. Bench press, A minus catching. But I think we go Rash Rashad Scott. Uh, that's the pick here. 68 overall, normal development. And that's just what you're getting with this draft class. We hit on the first two picks, I would say, obviously. But, you know, this is what you get. He's pretty much a fourth round pick. 68 overall. I mean, you really can't complain. We can kind of help him build up. As now we head into the fourth round. And we got pick number four with this that, with that trade we made with the Raiders. And I think maybe Brad Beck is the pick. 6'5", 250. And he is a 71 overall, hidden development tight end. And he uh, looks pretty good, 42 in true talent. So we'll have to take a look at his ratings. 84 speed, 82 catching. So we'll have to work on his route running. He's got very, he's got good catching traffic. That is good to see. We just have to work on the route running, that's for sure. So the next couple picks, the fourth round and fifth round, we just traded out of them. We acquired picks for next year's draft because... It's just not a whole lot there. So the fourth and fifth round picks, we just drop out. And now we go into the sixth round. And you can see now we're just trying to hit on guys that possibly could be there. Max Harper, right end. But do we need more ends? That's that's the whole thing, too. We'll just take them. 64 overall. I mean, it's a good pick. But still, these guys, I would say, have probably practice squad written all over them. And that's going to finish out our draft. Not the most exciting draft. We take a center in the second round. We, we trade out of the first. But Braxton Clay, I would say, Beck, those two guys, even Lich. Lich is a very good pick. Uh, but Braxton Clay looks like an absolute beast. And I think he will definitely see, I don't know if he'll start this year, but he will see plenty of playing time. That is for sure. Same with Brad Beck. We're going to try to get him in, involved. Um, I, I would love to get Alex Keyes involved because what we've seen from him this past season, he's very good. And with Gasicki always seeming to be hurt, uh, let's you know see what these younger guys can definitely do. We took Juan Baker last pick, but just not anything worth it at all. Uh, as we go through the draft, number one overall pick, Doug Honeycutt, 78 overall. He's only a normal development, but. You know, he works if he works on his own coverage, he's got the ability to be better. George Carnegie, hidden development for the Jets, right tackle. So they're trying to up their offensive line, obviously having a great free agency with picking up some really solid receivers and running back. Warren Pickett's normal development. You can even see even see in the development traits. There's rarely any hidden developments at all in this draft class. It's very low. Um, as we continue to look down, see if there's anybody we take want to kind of take a look at um oh i want to see eli duhan that is the guy i want to see who cleveland took as we go down the list james bradford here's the first overall pick for the bills normal development 75 overall he's got some speed 94 speed 82 catching he'll just have to continuously work on his route running and his release that's for sure as we continue down the list and here's marco mckay Hidden development for Tennessee. So what I think I will do with this is we're just going to make a move. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do it in this, in, in, in here. I'll probably wait to the, the, maybe like a week one or in the preseason. But we're just going to get him out of there. I, he's just going to sit there. Calvin McLean is there. He's just going to sit there. So we're going to try to get him to a team where he can actually get some playing time. Bobby Stevenson, we don't have to worry about that. He will definitely play for the Rams. 
He will be their quarterback. That's that's why you took him. Makes perfect sense. It's not like Tennessee has a quarterback. You know, they have a guy there and like Ryan Tannehill who's going to be done in a year. They just signed a guy to a massive contract, so we got to make a, something there. Eli Duan, this is the guy we were thinking about taking. 78 overall, hidden develop, 86 speed, 90 acceleration, 81 strength, 82 finesse moves. The Browns just get richer with the pass rushing ability, and there you go. So, let's take a look at the teams in our division. We already saw the Bills' number one pick. Here's their second pick, uh, Melo Thomas. Not too bad, 73 overall. And really looking at their draft, a couple 69 overall receivers. With this draft class, that's a pretty good draft. And same with the Jets. Carnegie, 74, we saw that. Eric Mills, hidden development. So they have a couple hidden developments right there. 70 overall middle linebacker. So the Jets, I would say, out of so far out of the whole teams in our division, I'll have to take a look what the Patriots did. I would say the Jets won the offseason in our division. As you can see, the Patriots, they didn't even have a first-round pick. Obviously, they traded away last year for Deshaun Watson. But Greg Parrish, their best pick, 72 overall tight end, only a normal development. But he has good speed, pretty good catching, uh, just has to work on everything else. And those are the draft classes you're kind of going to see. Just 60 overalls, nothing too crazy, even with first-round picks. So, after the draft, we signed. We decided to sign Judge Jaquiski Tart. Uh, to, we need a backup safety for sure. We also need more backup offensive linemen, so we're going to sign Tardiff there. And Leonard Fournette, we're going to bring on a veteran running back, obviously losing Gus Edwards, and we're going to sign those three guys. As we take a look at the schedule this season, what a start. Start off, rematch of the AFC Championship, and then second week, rematch of the Super Bowl. And then we take on Buffalo, then Jacksonville, and then to finish it off, the front, then we take on the Ravens right there. So... What a stretch of games. This first four, I mean, who knows what the Jaguars could be, but man, that is a heck of a way to start off a season. And let's see how we finish. I don't see that. So we got the Patriots, and then we go to New Orleans, take on Pittsburgh, go to New England, and then we go to Kansas City. So it doesn't finish off any easier as well. This is a very tough schedule and uh, should be interesting. That is for sure. As that is pretty much going to do it for the offseason, we will not play any of the preseason. There's just really no reason to. Um, there's no position battles. There's nothing going on this year. We don't need to see who's going to win the receiver spot. We don't need to see who's going to win maybe a running back or anything. There's just no really intrigue. So we're just going to skip on through the preseason. Uh, we'll head to week number one to take on the Browns and then See if we can make it three straight Super Bowls. We'll see. This might be the toughest season yet. It's just we got to stay healthy, and that's really the key thing there. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the patience and, you know, how long sometimes it takes now. I just really appreciate it. But if you guys can please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.